Welcome back to another episode of Annie Makes Art School. Today's session is going to be exploring acrylic mediums, which are substances that you can add into your acrylic paints to change their viscosity, transparency, and texture. For today's session, I purchased a sample kit from Golden Acrylics that has six of their more popular mediums, and I've gone ahead and swatched each one to get a sense of how it works. In a moment here, I'm gonna talk through what the different purposes are for these mediums, and then I'm gonna do a talk through of the process of painting this oyster. I thought an oyster would be a fun one to try out for these mediums because there's such a variety of texture within a single object. The kind of scratchy, coarse quality of the shell versus the shiny, smooth center. Um, so that was really fun applying some of these to that, and I'm excited to talk you through the process that I went through in painting these. I will admit this session is a little bit selfish because for the last few years, I've gotten a lot more enjoyment and growth out of my painting process with oils than I have with acrylic. I don't really tend to use acrylic that much unless I'm in kind of a rush and I want that fast drying time. And that's not really fair to this medium because there is a lot of flexibility and experimentation available in acrylics as well. So this was a fun opportunity for me to try out some of the different things that can change drying time, consistency, the type of texture you get from your paints. I feel like I learned a lot from this session and I hope that you guys also find it entertaining and educational. As a side note, I originally intended on including gesso in the conversation about kind of acrylic accessories today, but gesso is one of my favorite art tools, bizarrely enough, and I just found that there was too much for me to say about it to include with already a pretty big pile of information. So I'll be doing a separate session on gesso and specifically my relationship with gesso in my sketchbook coming up soon. If there are other materials like this that you yourself have always been curious about or wanted to learn more about, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'm happy to do some test drives for you just like I did for these. Let's get started. Before filming, I set up these six cards knowing that I wanted to test for translucency as well as how these mediums worked both as a base and as a mixture. So before anything, I took each of the mediums and put them under the as a base section totally on their own and allowed that layer to dry. At this point, I'm now taking plain acrylic, not mixed with any of the mediums, and I'm going on top of each of those dried medium layers to see if you're painting on top of a section that you've used each medium in, how that'll affect the subsequent layers. For the first three swatches, there's not a big difference between painting directly on the paper versus painting over the medium because they're all fairly thin, but in the following three, there's a big difference because they have so much density and texture to them. From this point, I take each medium individually, starting with the soft gel gloss, and I combine a mixture of about two parts of the medium and one part paint. I then take that mixture and I paint over the text where I've written translucency to test how much of that text remains visible underneath the paint. And then I also apply some of that under the as a mix section just to see what it looks like on its own. From there, I blend a little bit more of the acrylic into my mixture just to get a little bit more color, and I put that on top of part of the translucency section just to see as I add more paint and more layers how the translucency holds up. Now that we've discussed what the swatching process itself was, let's get into what the actual mediums are. As I mentioned, this one is the soft gel gloss. All of the ones in this kit have basically the same packaging, but if you're curious, that's what the tube looks like. And the purpose of the soft gel gloss is to add flow and transparency to your paints. So this is really helpful during a glazing process when you're wanting to add color on top of whatever section you're working on, but you don't want to completely hide the layers underneath. And then you get the bonus of that glossy finish to it. I found this incredibly helpful in the later stages of my painting, as we'll discuss when we get into my oyster process. However, I also tried using it a little earlier on as a replacement for just watered down washes. And as a base layer, I don't love it to work on top of because of that glossy finish. So I would say this is super helpful if you like doing heavily layered pieces and you wanna be able to add those subtle gradations of color, but I do recommend it more for later on in the painting as opposed to the earlier stages. Up next, we have a regular gel semi-gloss. This was one that I honestly did not find as much use out of, although it is kind of the base version of a gel medium. It has a semi-gloss, so it doesn't have that kind of high shine quality of the soft gel gloss, and it's more for kind of overall use if you're wanting to extend your paint without changing the consistency. So that is helpful in that the gel gloss does create a much thinner paint, and if you want something that still has a little bit more body to it, you're gonna wanna go the regular gel route. But honestly, I found that this did not make a dramatic enough difference in my paints to feel like it was super worth it. Maybe you would have a different opinion depending on what your painting process is, but I would say, well, this is certainly not a bad medium. I did not find it as exciting as some of the others. The third medium from this set, the Extra Heavy Gel Matte, ended up being one of my absolute favorites. 
I don't know how well this translates to camera. However, this gel has almost a molding paste type quality to it. It's got a real heaviness and thickness to it. You might be able to see how it kind of sticks up off the paper a little bit. I don't know if you can tell that on camera, but it does. It has this like very bold, thick texture to it, but because it's still a gel as opposed to a paste, it maintains that transparency. So if you're looking to add that kind of texture and weight and heaviness to your paint, without losing transparency, this thing is straight up magic for it. I highly recommend. I did not know that was something I was looking for in my paints, but now that I have access to it, I'm in love. When you mix it with your paints, you get this kind of thick, heavy, almost like cake frosting quality to your paint that is absolutely delightful. 10 out of 10, definitely recommend. So while our first three mediums were all fairly similar to each other, just with different amounts of sort of body to them, our next three are dramatically different, and I think of them as kind of our party mediums. These are where things get kind of crazy. So we're going to start off with a light molding paste, which as you can see has that delightful kind of frosting quality to it, but to an even greater degree than that heavy gel that we'd mentioned. So while our heavy gel does hold on to kind of a nice texture and gives you a little bit more body than just the, the more translucent options, if I turn it to the side, you can see it's not sticking very much up off the page. By comparison, our light molding paste is going to have these peaks that pop right off and even though it's completely dry, maintain their shape. So you get a whole lot of texture, a lot of hold, and a, sort of a light fluffiness to it that I absolutely love. The bonus to using the heavy gel instead is that you are maintaining that translucency versus as you can see with the light molding paste, you're going to lose a lot of the layer that's underneath. Not necessarily a bad thing, but I would say the heavy gel is better for working, adding additional texture later on in your painting versus the molding paste is gonna make more sense in the base layers when you're first establishing that weight and texture. Another champion in the area of texture adding is our coarse pumice gel. As you can see just by looking at this, it has a super sandy, gritty quality to it. Um, this was really fun in experimenting with the painting of the oyster because they do have that kind of gritty quality to their shells. And this literally looks like you've just taken sand and dumped it right onto your painting. Uh, it has a similar quality if you've ever done um, watercolors where you add salt to get that texture. Only in that case, you usually take the salt back off of the page. And in this case, the texture itself remains the entire time. I really like playing with this texture, although I do admit I don't know how much of a purpose it would serve in most of my paintings. It was fun to find a way to incorporate it, but I think if I were working on a traditional figure or something like that, I'm not as confident as to how I would use this paste or if I would need it in the first place. Our last medium from this set is clear tar gel. And I'll be honest and tell you that when I bought this set, I had never even heard of clear tar gel and I'm now totally obsessed with it. I had so much fun. This is probably my favorite out of the entire set. So what you do is you mix your paint with the clear tar gel and it gives it this super glossy and very drippy quality. And then you can drip it from either a palette knife or a fine brush to create these very tiny fine lines with this delicious kind of organic texture to them. This one is so fun for adding those kind of Jackson Pollock type spatters, but it's also going to maintain that transparency and that gloss so you get a really interesting texture on your canvas. This one is 20 out of 10 stars, so much fun to play with, I cannot recommend it enough. And you'll see when I go over how I incorporated this into my painting, just how much fun I had with it. I probably added more of it than I needed to. So if you're looking to pick out just one of these to play with, this one definitely is my recommendation. I had a lot of fun with it and I think it adds a really different textural quality to your piece. So let's dive into the painting itself. I started out by mixing up some of the soft gel gloss with some acrylic paint to try and create an initial wash layer. Normally I would just blend my paint with water to do this step, but I figured I have a new tool in my toolkit, why not give it a try? It did technically get the job done, but it didn't spread the easiest for that large of a surface, and I ended up adding water to it anyway, just to get it a little bit more blendable. And even then, I found that it actually was not the best for this use, because that glossy finish was not the most satisfying surface to work on top of.
Next, I busted out the molding paste, which I was really excited to use on this piece. I generally do texture building in my paintings just by being very heavy-handed with my application, so I was excited to have a tool that would kind of lean into my heavy-handed impasto quality that I like to see in art. So I mixed up my molding paste and it has this really nice fluffy feel to it. And then I went in around the outside of the shell portion of the oyster and began just sort of adding where I saw a little extra body and shape and wanted to have a little lift off of the canvas. It's probably worth noting that this layer was incredibly slow to dry. That makes sense because it's quite thick, so of course it's gonna take some time to air dry, but eventually I did get impatient and pause the process to use a hair dryer. So factor in that slow drying time if you use this one. Next, I busted out the regular gel, which I'm still not entirely wild about. It's definitely not a bad medium. It gives a nice viscosity to the paint, so it smoothly worked across my surface, but I didn't find it as satisfying as the soft gel gloss. Um, it just didn't make as big of a difference, so if I was going to pick one or the other, I would probably go with that one. But this one did do its job. I mixed up a darker tone and went in and added in some of my initial shadow layers. I hate wasting art supplies, and at this point I realized that my darker mixture that I'd used the regular gel medium in was starting to dry up a little bit, so I added a good amount of water to thin it out even more, and then I used that as a background layer, filling in um, kind of a light textured sloppy mix across an area of the canvas. I eventually added in the green mixture as well to the background to serve two purposes. One, to continue forward on my quest of not wasting these paints that I had already mixed, but also because I don't like my backgrounds to be particularly complicated, but I also don't like for them to be a single flat color. So whenever possible, I try and layer gradients on top of each other to get more depth and color and interest out of the background. Now that I had some substantial layers built up, I was excited to get back into that soft gel gloss because I could tell in the beginning that it was going to work better as a layer on top of some existing art as opposed to a base layer. So I mixed up a primarily soft gel gloss mix with a little bit of acrylic paint to get a really thinned out, super glazy mixture and then began working that into the piece. At this point, my painting was starting to look a little too Technicolor Lisa Frank, so I mixed up a little bit of gray and toned down some of the bolder areas.
At this point, I got into one of my unexpected favorites, which was the Extra Heavy Gel Matte. I mixed it up with a darker color and had not expected to find this a particularly exciting medium to work with, but once I mixed it, I found that it creates this really heavy, gooey, delicious paint to work with. It almost felt like I was working with oils in terms of the textural quality of it. I returned to the soft gel gloss, which you may notice is one of my most used mediums from this session. I think that boils down to both the quality of the medium and also how easy it was to understand its purpose. With some of these other mediums, I felt like I had to kind of shoehorn them into my painting process and figure out ways to incorporate them. Versus with the soft gel gloss, it was clear to understand that if I wanted to add a really nice, light, translucent glaze layer, that was my go-to.
At this point, my fear of material waste kicks in again, so I water down some of that soft gel gloss red and do a layer over the entire background. Because I had already built up a pretty solid gradient in the background, I just smoothed this red layer over the entire thing, and the gradient still peeks through because it has such a high translucency. I once again return to the well of the soft gel gloss because I like it and I understand it and I wanted to add a little subtle lavender. Finally, at this point, I break out my coarse pumice gel, which was one that I was really excited to work with and I knew right away I wanted to incorporate into the shell. It has this super gritty, grainy, sandy quality to it, and I just knew that was going to be really fun to apply on that shell texture. So I used it a lot at the very base of the shell where there would be a lot of that grit, and then added it in a couple of small areas that peaked up along the sides. I found it quite easy to work with and super smooth and blendable. I mean, not literally smooth because its whole point is that it's coarse, but you get what I mean. There was a nice flow to it. But if you do try out this one and have difficulty at all with spreading it, you also can mix it with some of the other mediums to thin it out a little bit more and make it spread a little easier. Finally, at this point, I got to use my favorite, which was the clear tar gel. As you can see when I pour it out, it's got already that super drippy, smooth, shiny quality to it. It's so fun to play with. I mixed it up with some white because the gel by itself is quite see-through, and I wanted to use it for my brightest white highlights to get that shiny, wet effect on the inside of my oyster. Throughout this application, I'm not actually touching my brush to the canvas. I fill my brush up with the medium and then hold it a little bit above the surface and allow the paint to drip off of it and then drag that drip in the direction that I want to guide it. That concludes this particular oyster painting. Um, so I'm gonna finish up by showing you some close-ups of some different sections of the painting so you can see a little bit better look at how these mediums dry. 
Here's the base of the shell. The smoother areas that you see are primarily the molding paste versus that more textured crinkly area is the pumice gel. Here are some of the areas where I used the clear tar gel mixed with white acrylic to create those bright white highlights. I love these weird, drippy, organic fine lines that they make. You can also see through this section how a combination of those glossier, more transparent gels have let me really build up some interesting color layers. This area is a nice example of the kind of really delicate glaze you can get using that soft gel gloss. And here's a nice up close look at one of my favorites, that extra heavy gel mat. You can see it does have some of that three dimensional quality that the pastes do, but it still has some translucency and thinness to it as well. And here is our finished piece in a little bit better lighting. I hope you guys found this helpful. As always, let me know in the comments if you have questions or requests for future subjects to cover.